Okay, we are back in the Lost Shrine again for the third time. And so far in playthrough C, it's been the exact same as playthrough B. I just sped through everything again. Nothing changed. And I assume that these fights, these upcoming fights will all be the same up until the very end. So I guess I'm just gonna skip to it. There might be one or two lines when we were fighting Devil and Popola where I missed what Tyrant said. So yeah, I guess I'll show you that and then uh, we'll head right on. Are these shades? I don't think so. It's a lie. I don't believe it. <laughs> Kill them, you glorious bastards. Kill them all. And that was the line we were missing. <laughs> oh. I have something to defend. I have a reason to live. Because he doesn't, right? <laughs> You know, all this is happening because we can't understand what the hell he's saying. <laughs> he hesitated for a second though. All right, all right. Well, ain't that precious. <laughs> I'm happy for him. You don't have to leave. You know, Sunshine, that black scrawl has almost completely taken you over. What? <sighs> yeah, I know. But goddamn, we had fun, huh? Killing and killing and more killing. What a rush. Yeah. <gasps> Wait! No! No, no, no! It wasn't fun at all! I turned you into a killing machine! I spread evil and chaos around the world! But it all feels so empty now! Why? I don't understand! What the hell is Kaina doing? To Tyron. I'm gonna swallow you up, Sunshine! I'm gonna swallow you whole! But oh, she's letting him do it. Is that what's happening? I never even knew Kaina had the black scrawl. We saw some of the tattoo stuff on her hand before when she was showing it to Emil, but I thought that was just generic shade stuff. Oh my god. Kaine, what is it? Listen to me. The shade inside me is growing, and I can't stop it. Soon. Real soon. I'm gonna go berserk. I can't hold it back anymore. Kaine, you have to fight. You have to- Just shut up and listen to me. Oh my god. Emil is gone, all right? So there's no way anyone can stop me. But he's alive! Please. Before it comes to that, I want you to kill me. Consider it.
Well, hell, sunshine! It's not like I can stop it! When gestalts go out of control, they lose their minds! Your memory and mine will be completely overridden! Aren't you a gestalt? <laughs> Kane! Run! Run! Yona's gone. <laughs> She's trying to- <gasps> God damn it! There has to be a way! No! I won't do that! Holy shit, my hell! We didn't come here to watch each other die! Yeah! You taught me something, Kaine. You taught me that a man must be strong to protect those he loves. Believe in me, Kaine. I'm going to save you! I swear it! Well, there might be one way to save her. Who said that? It don't matter, so don't ask. Just shut up and listen. We can hear him. Wait, are you... I said, listen! There's a way to save Kaine's life, all right? But you're gonna have to make a difficult decision. I'll do whatever it takes. When the time comes, I'm going to pin Kaine down. And as soon as I do, you need to stab her in the heart. No, I can't. Fine. Don't believe me. Stand around with your thumb up your ass and watch her die a terrible death. You want me to believe you? I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it until you make me do it. Oh, she's trying to fight it too. And those bubbles are not kidding around. They're really, really strong. He hasn't signaled me yet. Do I have to fight Kaine? I don't want to. She never even said anything about having the black scroll. What the heck? And we know, we know Emil is alive. We don't have to kill Kaine. Well, we don't have to get Emil to kill Kaine either. Oh! Ah! I don't want to. There must be another way. Is Tyron offering to kill himself then? Is that what's happening? Because he mentioned striking her in the heart. And that's where I think Tyron is. Oh shit. Oh! I don't I don't want to. Kaine! Come to your senses! Please! No! Very nice. Now, if you want to save your precious Kaine, there are two ways to do it. One is to plunge your sword into her chest. That's what she wants after all. Freedom from burdens. Freedom from life. What's the other way? The other way... is to make her a normal human being again. How? But to make that happen, you gotta trade your own existence for hers. Well, there you go. Good luck with that. You're the shade inside Kaine. Why are you trying to help her? Probably for the same reason you are. Enough talk. Make your choice. Either I kill her, or I make her human again. 
by trading my existence for her. So my life for her life, or we just kill her. End Kaina's life and free her from her burden. Or sacrifice your own existence to make Kaina human again. I'm pretty sure I was told that I should do the first one first, so... Yeah, we're gonna do that. Realistically though, given the personality of the father, I wouldn't be surprised if he chose to trade himself for Kaine though. Although, Yona's back now too. Kaine. What? They had a thing? Kaine. Let's go home. Can you hear me? <gasps> I spent years inside Kaine's body, tormenting her from within. I felt her pain, her emotions, as if they were my own. And there was so much pain. So when I say she's free now, I want you to believe me. Thanks to you, Kaine has been forgiven and saved. Oh wait, she had a final message for you. Thank you. Thank you. Kaine. I want to know this information would I not rather just have had Yona be like hey dad look outside the window and ignore Kaine Kaine she did so much for us and that's her ending that's how she comes to an end all right we gotta check out the other ending first ending D your choice in this decision could allow you to view the very last piece of the ending Thank you from Kaine to me for ending her life. Very nice. Now, if you want to save your precious Kaine, there are two ways to do it. One is to plunge your sword into her chest. That's what she wants after all. Freedom from burdens. Freedom from life. What's the other way? The other way is to make her a normal human being again. But to make that happen, you gotta trade your own existence for hers. Well, there you go. Good luck with that. You're the shade inside Kaine. Why are you trying to help her? Probably for the same reason you are. Enough talk. Make your choice. The wording they use here is very interesting. Not giving up your life or your soul, but trading your existence for her. Hmm. To make her human again. Is that something that a shade can do? Some voodoo magic? We'll have to see. Kaine will return 
to her mortal life. <laughs> well, now I'm very glad I did the first one first. Okay. Even if you elect against it this time, you can always return to the selection by clearing the game again. Yeah. All near save data on the same user account will be erased. Oh no, but my friends save! <laughs> there were three save slots, right? So I used two, and I kept one from my friend's old save. It was an old save from like seven years ago anyway, so hopefully she doesn't mind. Even if she does, there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> This is your last chance to change your mind. Are you really, really sure about this? <sighs> sure as Oliver B. Oh my god. Whoa, okay. You're not just talking about... Oh. I didn't know they had that. Oh my god. No, I should have put a wrong name and see what would happen. Probably it would just say the incorrect name was entered. Oh my god. <gasps> no! My 99 broken antennas! Okay, so the reason they want me to collect all the weapons is because they want to erase all of it. No, my shaman fish! Everything. My 30 plus hours of hard work. No! <gasps> no! My friend save! No fancy goodbyes, or anything. Just straight up disappeared from the world. Are you alright? Yona... Are you... Are you the one who helped me? She's gotta remember a little bit. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're okay. What's wrong? I mean, you defeated the Shadow Lord and everything, but... You... you don't look happy. So the Shadow Lord still exists. I don't... Oh! A lunar tear! How pretty! I 
just found something special. Something very special. Okay, well, that was ending CND. Kind of sweating right now because I'm hoping that nothing happens to this recording. Otherwise, I wouldn't even have the save to replay this anymore. Um, yeah, so we've seen everything in Nier now. And my... my final impressions of it is kind of mixed. At least for ending D, I think I would have liked to see a little bit more about how that process of erasing my existence actually works because it felt kind of like we were just pressing a button and then it worked. For whatever magical reason. But putting that aside, Mm, I'm gonna assume that Yona and Kaina start living together from now on or something, and then eventually Emil will catch up to us, and everyone will just live on, forgetting that the father exists. Which, you know, the father being the father, I think, I think he's totally okay with his choice. The one thing that did baffle me a little bit was how he kissed Kaine. I never really got the impression aside from these endings that they had any sort of thing going on, especially because I always thought that Kaina was a tad younger than the father. But I think the endings make a lot less sense if they didn't have any sort of romantic feelings for each other, so I'll assume they do, and I think they do, yeah. It's just that it kind of caught me off guard. I didn't really feel like they hinted toward that at all. But I think the father would definitely have to have some really, really strong feelings for Kaina to want to erase his own existence for her. Especially considering that he just got his daughter back and now he can't... he can't even spend time with her. Pretty interesting little gimmick here. I do like that they got all meta here with the incorporation of this gameplay mechanic. Not even a gameplay mechanic. A mechanic of video games as a whole into the story. That being said, I don't think I can say that this is a game that I can recommend to everybody I know without significant caveats. I think it's really important that I keep in mind that Nier is a game from 2010, seven years ago, because there's a lot of elements that are clearly just infuriating by today's standards. The repetition and tedium that come in multiple layers. The first layer being, in one single playthrough, you have to visit the towns multiples and multiples of times, and I think for my first playthrough, before I reach ending A, I'm pretty sure I've already been to every single town like 10 times already, which... Well, I wish it wasn't that way, let's just put it like that. And then the second layer is that you have to play the game multiples of times to... get more information. Uh, like I've mentioned before, I think it's a... very gutsy thing to do for a game developer. But is it the best thing to do? Not for your player's sanity, I don't think so. A and B I can kind of get behind because they show different perspectives, but then when it got to C and D, like the whole process of me getting to the Shadow Lord's castle and play through C again, I wasn't even paying attention to anything because it was all the same, it was mindless button mashing. So yes, I made it through it and I got the extra information that was not present in the first playthrough, and I'm glad to have gotten it, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> One of the other problems with the multiple playthroughs is that they start you at five years later, but I... I definitely think five years ago, those events were more interesting than the events five years later. Like, after seeing all of this, I still think the high point of the game is when Kaina gave her life up to be petrified. The events that happened five years later... Mmm... But in a nutshell, it was really just five boss fights, right? Not really anything too crazy happened aside from that. It's also probably because the novelty wore off by that point, because the first time I saw the Forest of Myth, I could still say, oh, that's pretty unique. But you know, if I've seen it five times over, I'm not as likely to say, oh yeah, that's so unique and interesting and I love reading this. <laughs> Speaking of the Forest of Myth though, the different gameplay genres that they incorporate into Nier, it is unique. That part is a definite positive, I think, especially considering that this is a seven-year-old game. But if we talk about the story... I thought the initial plot with the gestalts and the replicants, that's all really interesting stuff. But the way they chose to execute the story in this game, I think leaves so much more to be desired. Well, for starters, and this might be a personal preference again, but I feel like a lot of the cutscenes were 
a few shades, <laughs> get it, shades? A few shades too melodramatic and heavy-handed. In playthrough B, when we were fighting all those bosses, like every single one, they were just telling us, you're this asshole, you're this person who ruined everything, everything was fine before you came along, it was all you, 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 you. Not exactly the most subtle way to make me realize the fault of my actions here. Okay, let me let me take a pause here and see if there is a post credit scene. Oh my god. Well, that is it for Nier Gestalt. Oh, if I haven't shown you the menu screen enough for you to realize that Lunar Tear wasn't there before. Hmm. What was I talking about just now? Playthrough B being all guilt trippy. Okay, yes. Um, on the level of, like, detail in the lore, from the comment section, I'm getting the impression that you're all getting this external information from... I think somebody mentioned to me that there is a supplementary book called Grimoire Near. And, you know, I think that's totally great, that there is a lot of extra lore out there. But at the same time, I'm left wondering why did it put more of it in the game? Was it a budget reason or, I don't know, like a preference reason? I feel like they left so much out of the actual game itself, although with that leaving out does come one very interesting realization. And that's um the fact that the father, up until his very last moment, never realizes that the world is messed up because of him, because he was killing all these shades. The only people that know are Kaine, Kaine Shade, Devila, Popola, and me. I guess you can call this a... I don't know, a deconstruction of the I'm the hero and I gotta save the world trope because we just did the opposite of that. So that's good and all, but I still don't like how they left out a lot of information that I thought would really add to it. For example, Tyron's background. I saw somebody in the comments talking about his background, but the fact that pretty much none of it was in the actual game itself. Well, when you play the game, it's like, okay, here's Tyron. He's kind of shade. Done. So I really wish they put more of that into the game, because you can't expect everyone who plays your game to look up that additional crap, especially when you already gated so much stuff behind multiple playthroughs. Yeah, that's um... That's pretty much my general thoughts on Nier. Like, there's a lot of good things, but there's also a lot of like... Why would you do this? Sort of thing. And overall, I think it's hard for me to recommend this to... Everybody who I know who games or something like that. Getting to the point where it becomes worth it is pretty high effort. I mean, I did say a lot here, but I it's not like I didn't enjoy Nier. I think I saw enough interesting information to justify the time I spent on it. So I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. And um, yeah, this was my experience with Nier. As for Nier Automata, or Automata, whichever one doesn't get me lynched, mm, I'm gonna have to take a little bit of a break before I play it because I feel like all the grinding and stuff in Nier Gestalt has taken its toll on me a little bit, so gonna need a little bit of a rest first. Mm -hmm. But other than that, thank you for joining me with Nier Gestalt, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing it, and I will see you all in another place in another time. Bye!